Hey guys, this time I'm going to show you how to remove the cylinder, the piston, and the clutch. Last time we got the cams and the cylinder head out of the way. The next step is to remove the cylinder itself and the piston. The cylinder is currently only secured by its connection to the water pipe, which is held on by two 8mm bolts. The o-ring on each bolt should be replaced at reassembly. With the water pipe off, we can carefully lift off the cylinder. It will probably be a little stuck, but be patient. Don't whack it too hard and don't pry with the screwdriver. As the piston approaches the end of the cylinder, you could, in theory, pull the wrist pin and just leave the piston inside the cylinder. This might be a good choice if you want to avoid the hassle associated with getting the piston rings back inside the cylinder, but I don't think I've got the manual dexterity to accomplish this, so I just pulled the cylinder all the way off the piston. The piston is held to the connecting rod by the wrist pin, and the only thing keeping the wrist pin from sliding out are two little spring clips. Remove one of them with needle nose pliers and push out the wrist pin. I found that an 11mm deep socket was the right diameter to help push it through. Pro tip here, have something to catch the far side, otherwise the wrist pin could go flying across the shop. I decided to reinstall the wrist pin and retaining clip on the piston for storage until I'm ready to reassemble. To reinstall, hold the retaining clip at the point farthest from the brake with your finger while pushing it into place with a pick. Pro tip here, don't just push without a separate hold down, or it might go flying across the shop and it will be much harder to find than the wrist pin was. Next step towards splitting the crankcase is to remove the clutch. While researching this step, I learned about the difference between a wet clutch and a dry clutch. MC Magazine actually has a pretty concise video about that here on YouTube. Check it out for more info on clutches in general. Anyhow, to remove the clutch, start by removing the 10 8mm bolts securing the right crankcase cover. There are 9 short bolts and 1 long bolt here by the coolant barb. As you pull on the crankcase cover, you need to rotate the clutch lifter arm counterclockwise to disengage the lifter arm spindle from the lifter piece. After the right crankcase cover is off, double check these two o-rings. You don't want to lose them and they definitely need to be in place when it's time to reassemble. With the right crankcase cover out of the way, we can now remove the five 10mm clutch lifter plate bolts and clutch springs. Do this by loosening incrementally in a crisscross pattern in several steps. Now we can remove a handful of things. The clutch lifter plate, the clutch discs, the clutch plates, the giant washer that is apparently called the judder spring, and the clutch lifter piece. With all that stuff out of there, we finally have access to the center lock nut, which is staked in place a lot like an axle nut on your car. We need to unstake it, being careful to avoid damaging the shaft threads. Pro tip here, don't use a cheap, tiny screwdriver, because it might just break off. Use something a little more stout if possible. With the staking defeated, we now have the challenge of loosening a 24mm nut that is on a rotating shaft. I don't actually have a metric socket that large, so I just used a 15 16 instead, which worked really well. Anyhow, the Honda recommended method for holding the shaft is to use the Honda Design Clutch Holder Tool number 07724-0050002. I didn't want to buy that tool or a generic equivalent or go to the auto parts store to rent one like it, so I tried a couple of DIY solutions. Eventually I figured out that I could anti-rotate the inner disc by threading paracord between it and the outer disc. An impact wrench didn't actually help here because the paracord was too springy. Just a regular socket and wrench did the trick. With the nut off, we should be able to just pull off the inner carrier. The inner carrier has a close tolerance spline fit to the shaft. 
I couldn't really get a good grip on the carriers, so I threaded some paracord through it again, which allowed me to get a good grip and also helped me pull very parallel to the axis of the shaft. This worked great for pulling, and also worked as a convenient method for catching the suddenly free component. This outer piece sits on needle bearings and came out really easy. The last piece to remove is the needle bearings itself. This was my first time getting into a clutch assembly. I don't exactly understand how each of these pieces work, but the disassembly seemed pretty straightforward. Anyhow, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching.